Okay, so in this video, we're going to do an example uh, that sort of uses what we talked about in the last video, uh, where we made that chart about what f looks like if f prime is positive and f double prime is positive, uh, and so on. So, um, anyway, what we have here is uh, we're going to sketch a graph of a function f given information about the first and second derivatives. So, example one here, uh, first of all, we're given that f of x is a polynomial, uh, and that's really good, that's helpful for us because that tells us that the graph of f of x is going to be uh, smooth and continuous, um, you know, there's no holes or discontinuities or any kind of asymptotes, no breaks, no jumps, uh, and the, there's also no sharp points anywhere, so that's going to be nice. Um, f of negative 2 is 3, f of 2 is negative 1, and we're also given information about f primed. f primed is positive on these two intervals here, negative infinity to negative 2, and uh, 2 to infinity. And f primed is negative on the interval from negative 2 to 2. Okay. And here's some info about the second derivative, f double primed is positive on negative 1 to infinity, uh, and f double primed is negative on negative infinity to negative 1. Okay. And the instructions are to sketch the graph of y equals f of x. So uh, with problems like this, um, they're a little bit tricky because there's no real uh, quick way to check yourself. Like you can't really plug anything into a calculator uh, and get an answer back. Um, but there is a way to check ourselves at the end. Um, just by looking at the graph that we come up with and see does it actually match this. So what we're about to do here is sort of uh, stuff we've done before but kind of going backwards. So we'll talk more about that at the end of this example. Um, but anyway, we don't really want to just jump right in without sorting all this out. Uh, it'll be a little too difficult that way. So let's go through this uh, process here with these four steps. So uh, step one is to uh, plot the given points. Okay? So our given points are f of negative 2 equals 3, f of 2 equals negative 1. Okay, so we're going to plot these points first. So before we do that, let's go through the rest of these steps here. Uh, step two, draw a number line and label the key x values. So what do we mean by key x values? Uh, that's not really a standard term, um, but all I mean here is just uh, pretty much any x value that's mentioned here. So we'll talk more about that when we get to step two. Um, step three, in each interval that you get on this number line here, label where the first derivative is positive, where it's negative, and also where the second derivative is positive and where it's negative. Okay. And then step four, uh, using your interval from step three, uh, sketch the graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and do step one, plot the given points. Okay. So uh, let's come over here and make ourselves a little axis here. X-axis and a Y-axis. Okay, so um, what are the points we had? We had uh, f of negative 2 equals 3, and f of 2 equals negative 1. So this tells us that when x is negative 2, y is 3, and when x is 2, y is negative 1. So our two points that we are going to plot are negative 2 comma 3 and 2 comma negative 1. Okay. So if we come over here, uh, negative 2, let's put that about here, and uh, 3 we can put up here. So here's negative 2 comma 3. Maybe not quite the scale, but it doesn't really matter because we're just making a rough sketch. Uh, and if you have a graph paper you want to follow along with, that'd probably be a little bit better. Um, anyway, that's negative 2 comma 3. And we also want 2, uh, negative 1. So 2 would be about over here. And negative 1, uh, we'll put down here. So 2 comma negative 1 is sort of around here, roughly. Okay. So there's our two points. Uh, that we were given. So step one, plot the given points. Step two, draw a number line and label the key x values. So let's go ahead and draw a number line. Uh, and again, the key x values, that just means any x value that's mentioned in the problem. So let's come up here, draw our number line. All right, and we're talking about values of x, so we'll, we'll go ahead and label this x, uh, just to be thorough. And so we know what's happening here. Um, anyway, uh, let's find out what are the key x values. So let's go ahead and find out what they are. Let's write them down up here. Uh, just to make it easier on ourselves when we plot them on the number line. So uh, remember the key x values, that's just any x value that's mentioned. So negative 2 is an x value. 2 is another x value that's mentioned. So let's go ahead and write these here just to keep track of them. Okay, negative 2 and 2. Uh, are there any other ones? Let's see. Well, that's a y value. That's a y value, so we just ignore them. Okay, here, um, negative infinity and positive infinity, those aren't numbers, so we're just going to uh, ignore those. Okay, we can't really treat them as numbers because they just aren't. Um, so ignore the infinities always, uh, or this type of thing. Negative 2 and 2, we already have those written down. Negative 2 and 2, there they are again. 
uh, negative 1, okay, there's a new one, and negative 1, uh, and that's it. Okay, so just negative 1. It's the only other one there. So negative 2, 2, and negative 1. Okay, so these are the three uh, key values, so to speak, that we're going to put on the number line. And again, uh, make sure we put them in order. So negative 2 is going to come first. So let's go ahead and switch back. Uh, negative 2, and then negative 1 comes next, and then 2 comes after that. So this is uh, incredibly not to scale, but that's, that's okay, really. Um, this is the only important part here is that we, now we have four intervals. This interval here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. Okay. So uh, that was step two. Okay, draw a number line and label the key x values. All right. Now, before moving on to step three, so it's not really explicitly mentioned in step two, but uh, it might help us, or it's going to help us in step four, uh, if we label all these x values on our graph also. So negative two, negative one, and two, let's label all those x values. Well, negative two and two, those are already labeled here and here. But let's also put a little tick mark where x equals negative one. Okay. So that'll happen right here. Okay, so we'll just put a little tick mark here. Now we don't have to do it now, we could do it when we get to step four. Uh, you know, if you forget to do it in step two, that's okay, because once you get to step four, you'll know that, oh, I'm gonna have to draw that there anyway. So do it now, do it later, it doesn't matter. But we'll just get it out of the way now. So anyway, um, that's it for step two. Now step three, in each of these intervals, uh, these four intervals here, label where f prime is positive, where f prime is negative, where f double prime is positive, where f double prime is negative. So this is sort of the bulk of the work here. Um, it could be a little tricky, but it's really not too bad. Um, it's just where most of the work is. So what we're gonna do is go back to what we're given, okay? and we're gonna look here. What are we told? We're told that f prime of x is positive on negative infinity to negative two, and two to infinity. Okay? So what we're gonna do is take these two intervals here, and we know that f prime is positive on both of these intervals. So we're going to identify these intervals on this chart here. So, um, okay, before we do that, let's write out what these intervals are, just to help ourselves. So this interval here, this is negative infinity to negative two. Okay. And if you wanna write that below, uh, leave a little space here, because we're gonna put some stuff about f double primed here, and f prime is gonna go on top. So this interval is negative infinity to negative two, uh, this interval is negative 2 to negative 1. This interval is negative 1 to 2. And this interval here, this fourth interval, is 2 to infinity. 2 to positive infinity there. Okay, so uh, going back over here, we're pretty much directly just given that uh, f prime of x is positive on these intervals here, negative infinity, negative 2, and 2 to infinity. So we're going to go back to our number line here and see, do we have these intervals exactly? Yeah, we do. Here's negative infinity and negative two, and also uh, here's two to infinity. So we're told, we're just directly given uh, that on this interval and on this interval, f prime is positive. So let's go ahead and write that over here. f prime is greater than zero, f prime is greater than zero. Okay. So um, you know we haven't really done any calculations or anything like that. We're just directly given this. So all we're doing is taking the information that we're given um, and we're putting it, you know, in a more organized fashion that's a little bit easier to work with, uh, hopefully. Okay, so now we want to know where is f prime negative. Well, we're given f prime is negative on negative 2 to 2, okay? So, uh, negative 2 to 2, that's this whole interval here. So, from x equals negative 2 to x equals 2, f primed is negative. It's less than 0. That's pretty much what we're given. So, let's go ahead and write that here and here. Okay, so you know, even though we're given this uh, f prime of x is negative on this interval from negative two to two, we do want to write it twice. You know, once for each of these intervals, because we want to label in each of these four intervals. Okay, so uh, now we know what f prime is doing in each of these four intervals, and that's sort of the goal here. Now we're going to do the same thing with f double primed. Okay, so uh, we're going to go back over here and say, all right, f double prime of x is positive on negative one to infinity. Okay. So um, let's just focus on that for now. So from negative one to infinity, what does that correspond to on our number line? Well, that's negative one to infinity. So that's this whole piece here. So just ignore this piece. And if we're just gonna look at uh, this whole piece here, okay, we know that uh, we're given that f double prime of x is positive. So uh, just like what we just did with f prime being negative, okay, we're gonna label it in both of these two spots here. So, uh, and again, we're given from negative one to infinity, f double prime is positive. So f double primed is positive, 
and f double prime is positive. Okay. And uh, it's not hard to guess what's going to happen here, but just to be thorough, let's uh, keep doing it the way we've been doing it. Um, we're told that f double prime of x is negative on negative infinity to negative 1. So negative infinity to negative 1, where does that correspond to on our number line? Negative infinity to negative 1. So that's these two pieces here. Okay, so we're pretty much directly just given that uh, f double primed is negative here, and uh, it's negative here. Okay. So that's actually pretty much it for step three. Um, in each interval, label this and this and this. So that's what we just did. Uh, and again, that's kind of the bulk of the work. It might be a little bit tricky because uh, these intervals that you're given here might not match exactly what's happening over here on the number line. So like here, negative infinity, negative two, that did match exactly, so that was nice. Two to infinity, that did match exactly, that was nice. But negative two to two, uh, you know, that didn't match exactly, but that really doesn't matter, okay? So we know that um, if f primed is negative between x equals negative two and two, then, you know, we know f prime is negative here and f prime is negative here, okay, on this entire interval. So we just label it uh, in each piece here, okay? So why do we do that? Why do we label in each piece? Well, now, let's just focus on one uh, piece at a time, one little interval at a time. So on negative infinity to negative two, uh, what does f look like? Well, how can we tell what f looks like? We know that f primed is positive and f double primed is negative. So if we think back to the last video, what does that mean? This means that f is increasing, okay? If f primed is positive, that means the derivative is positive, the slope is positive. So that means uh, the function f is increasing and this, uh, the second derivative is negative. So that means f, the function f is concave down. So if f is increasing and concave down, then f sort of has this shape to it, right? Kind of sort of something like that. So increasing function, concave down, kind of sort of looks like that, all right? So let's go ahead and draw that uh, on here. So um, we want to draw a piece that kind of sort of looks something like this, and it's going to happen up to here, up to x equals negative 2, because okay? that's the piece we're looking at, negative infinity and negative 2. Uh, the function kind of sort of looks something like that. So let's go ahead and put that piece on there. Negative infinity to negative 2. Okay. Oh, well, that could have gone better. And uh, again, we're told it's a polynomial, so we know it's going to extend infinitely far to the left and to the right. So we know we can put this uh, arrow down here on it. Okay. So here, from negative infinity to negative 2, the function is uh, increasing and it's concave down. Okay. Now let's look at the next little interval here. From negative 2 to negative 1, what's happening? Uh, f primed is negative, meaning the function is decreasing, and f double primed is negative, meaning the function is concave down. Okay? So decreasing and concave down, what does that look like? Uh, that kind of sort of looks something like this. Okay? So decreasing and concave down. So let's go ahead and draw that. That's only from negative 2 to negative 1. So, uh, now it's decreasing and concave down, okay? So we see right here that, you know, when x equals negative 2, uh, the function clearly changes from increasing to decreasing, right? Uh, so from increasing to decreasing, we have that change there. Um, now what's going to happen in this third interval here? Uh, f primed is negative and f double primed is positive. So now what's happening is the function f is uh, still decreasing, okay? This, uh, the slope of the derivative is still negative, so the function is still decreasing. But now, uh, the second derivative is positive, so the function is concave up. So a decreasing function that's concave up kind of sort of has this little shape to it here, right? Kind of sort of something like that. So this happens uh, from x equals negative 1 to x equals 2. Okay? So here, before I draw this piece, uh, you might be wondering, how did I know to stop here um, and not, you know, maybe a little farther down? How do I know it's like this and maybe not more slanty like, I don't know, like that? Um, the answer is we really don't know that, okay? but since we're not given any information, uh, it doesn't really matter. And again, we're just making a rough sketch. We just kind of want to get the general shape right. And we also want to make sure that we plot the right points that we're given. Okay, but we don't know what the value of the function is at negative one. If we were given the value, we would certainly use that, but we were only given these two values here. Okay? So we don't know what the function f is when x is negative one. So um, we don't have to worry about the exact value here, just because we don't have enough information to know. And again, we just care about the general shape here. Okay, so uh, going back to this, between x equals negative 1 and x equals 2, uh, the function has this general shape to it, uh, decreasing function and concave up. Decreasing function, concave up. So uh, let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, sorry about that. But we do want to make sure we get to the point 2 comma negative 1. Okay. So uh, here, because we're given that when x is 2, the function, is, uh, the function value is negative 1. When x is 2, y equals negative 1. So once we start over here from x equals negative 1 to x equals 2, we want to have a decreasing function uh, that's concave up. And it has to stop at this point because we're given that the function goes through this point. Okay. So uh, notice that here, uh, we already talked about it briefly, but uh, the function clearly goes from increasing to decreasing. Okay? So here, uh, we can clearly see that the derivative changes from positive to negative. Right? That clearly happens right here. Um, and here, when x is negative 1, the second derivative changes from negative to positive. That change is a little more subtle. It's a little more difficult to see. Um, you know, here, if you cover this part up, you can see, yeah, that kind of looks concave down the whole way. And then if you cover this part up, you can kind of see, yeah, that looks concave up. Um, so the point I'm just trying to make is that, you know, when the first derivative changes sign from positive to negative or the other way around, it's pretty clear to see. But when concavity changes, uh, it's a little more subtle. It's a little more difficult to see exactly where that happens. So you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. You know, just kind of draw it so that it just kind of smoothly um, flows just kind of like that. Okay. So don't worry too much about getting it perfect uh, as long as it's, you know, generally more or less something like that. Um, that's all you really have to worry about. Okay, so how about this fourth piece? f prime is positive and f double prime is positive. So the function is increasing and the function is concave up. So increasing function concave up, what does that look like? Uh, kind of sort of something like this. Increasing function concave up. And that happens from 2 to infinity, okay? And we don't have to worry about going through any more points. So uh, we'll just go up like this. How do we know we cross the x-axis right here uh, and not maybe over here or closer to here? Uh, the answer is we don't know, again. But just like over here, you know, we didn't know where to stop here just when x is negative 1. But we don't know the y value. We don't really care, right? We don't care because we're not given that. Um, all we care about is getting the general shape. And that's what we have here, right? So this, uh, that's pretty much it for this example. This is a graph of y equals f of x. So um, we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the example, but how do you check yourself here? Well, what you could do is you could look at this graph and say, okay, um, forget about everything I was given. Let's just look at this graph and see if we can get back to what we were given okay, without looking at it. So where is this function increasing? Well, it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, right? And it's increasing from 2 to infinity. Okay? And it's decreasing from negative 2 to 2. Okay? What does it mean for a function to increase? That means the derivative is positive. Okay? So just by looking at the graph, we can tell the derivative is positive from negative infinity to negative 2 and from 2 to infinity, right? And we can tell that the derivative is negative from negative 2 to 2. And if we look back over here real quick, we can see that that is what we're given. So it's sort of a way to check yourself, but you know, um, you're pretty much just undoing what you did. So if you want to use that way to check yourself, that's pretty much the only thing you can do. Uh, you know, there's really nothing you can plug into a calculator or anything like that. So um, that's it for this example. We'll do another one in the next video. It'll be a little more complicated, but it's pretty much the exact same idea. Uh, follow these same four steps here. Okay. So that's coming up in the next video.